There have always been female custodies. This sentence has set the internet alight and joined <laughs> rather infamous ranks such as there is no war in Ba Sing Se or we have always been at war with East Asia. Not necessarily because of what these words say. In the case of the female custodies thing, for example, the news of female custodies dropped before this, as it was revealed to be part of the new 10th edition Adeptus Custodies Codex. And the reply was actually to a question. Why did you do this? And that is what we're going to explain today. Because there have always been female custodies is not so terrifying because of what it says, but because of what it means. This is no simple little lore change or adjustment, this is something far more sinister. Something worth actively and obviously gaslighting fans over. The erasure of established lore history, from both official and fan spaces, and its replacement by the anti-exclusivity and blandness of current year entertainment, where everything is made to be for everyone, all flavour is eradicated, and everyone, no matter who they are, are forced to repeat the same lie as a sign of their obedience. All of this is happening not because of something native to 40k. It is an outside force, and an extraordinarily malicious one at that, which many are now only slowly beginning to notice. That is why this little comic image series I've been playing in the background is so perfect by the artist Mick, by the way, over on Twitter. I'll put his handle up on screen in case you want to check him out. As so many now are having that moment of, what the hell is that? That obviously does not belong here. And then being told by GW, the institution itself, that no, you are mistaken. There have always been female custodies. And the confusion of that statement is then swiftly replaced with horror as one looks closer still and realizes that there are only two options with this monster. Resist or die. I went into more detail about precisely what the monster is in my Everything is Political video the other day. But to put it briefly, it is a political ideology designed from the very ground up to quietly infiltrate anything and everything, and begin to devour it from the inside out. A modus operandi worthy of chaos, but sadly this ideology is all too real. But we're not going to talk about the monster today, since I have already done so. Instead, we're going to talk about why GW decided to put out the response that have always been female custodies. A statement they obviously know to be false. GW, after all, literally wrote the law books that clearly and repeatedly stated there are only male custodians. GW is the company that for 30 years never once mentioned a single female custodies, or even alluded to the existence of one. So why choose to lie? Why elect to gaslight their own audience with this utterly, hilariously nonsensical statement? Why go so far as to have the fan wiki changed to continue their erasure of lore history? It is because Games Workshop have gone woke. And I mean now the company specifically, and the people inside of it, the community team, and the writing staff in particular. And by woke I mean the ideology of progressivism and intersectionality. Again, I won't go too deep into these for now, other than to explain why they make it possible for a company to straight up lie to its own consumers in such a blatant way. Why, in fact, this was the only option that they had. Beginning with the most obvious, the absolute unflinching moral necessity for Games Workshop to do so. 
GW, and by extension their most popular setting, Warhammer 40,000, has over the course of the last 10 years become increasingly popular. Explosively popular, in fact. Going from a market cap of some 2 to 300 millions in 2015 to 3.93 billion today. This has made it into a major British entertainment institution, and to hammer home the point, the founder of Games Workshop was knighted in 2022. And now Warhammer 40k is set to collaborate with Amazon on a full-blown TV series with Henry Cavill, the patron saint of geekdom itself, taking a leading role in its production, and GW has received investment from the likes of BlackRock and Vanguard some of the largest investment firms in the world. Warhammer is a big deal. And so obviously, it attracted the attention of the monster. The first real sign of its successful infiltration came over four years ago now, with the rather infamous Warhammer is for everyone post. Now, this in and of itself is, of course, nonsensical. Nothing can be for everyone unless it's air or water. Everyone has preferences, and so, naturally, nothing can be universally liked by everyone. But the explanation came swiftly in two parts. Firstly, we will continue to diversify our characters so everyone can find representation. And diversity and representation, of course, were never core concepts of 40k. It is a universe in which every race is fighting tooth and claw for basic survival against every other race. And not a single one of them would bat so much as an eyelash at the wholesale genocidal slaughter of the others. Every faction is filled with callous mass murderers of the highest order. The most humane amongst them will merely execute their enemies with a shot to the head, whilst the more sadistic ones will eat, enslave, or torture them to death because they literally feed off pain. And even within the Imperium of Man, these concepts are pointless. No one gives a shit if the person feeding the meat grinder is male or female or black or white. The Imperium's only concern is that it is feeding the meat grinder as effectively as possible, so as to not be overwhelmed by the countless existential threats breathing down the Imperium's neck. But of course, this statement had nothing to do with the universe. It was a real-world political declaration that GW had adopted wokeism and its system of morality. As diversity, equity, and representation are of course its key core tenets, its moral commandments, which of course come with a host of additional qualifiers as to the meaning of those words. Because obviously, the hobby had always been diverse and equitable, as the only barrier to entry was the size of your pocketbook. But that does not matter, because wokeism, as many have compared it to previously, is a religion, primarily due to the stringent nature of its commandments. You either abide by all of them in letter and spirit, or you are evil. And even if you agree with 95% of them, but not the last five, you are still evil. This is an absolutist religion, as we saw in the Everything is Political video with J.K. Rowling. She was a radical feminist, as progressive as they came just a few years ago, and now she is an evil bigot that must be boycotted. And of course, like any good religion, the opposite of these moral tenets must, of course, be sins. Homogeneity, inequality, and exclusivity. And unfortunately for GW and 40k, those three sins make up about oh, 96% of 40k. As practically every faction is aligned only with itself, 
And only in extreme circumstances will they even consider waiting to kill another faction if there is a worse faction nearby to fight first. Furthermore, every single faction has a rigidly enforced hierarchy, with absolute leaders and systems of oppressively entrenched power, and finally all factions, with the exception of the Tau, would gladly exclude every other faction from life if given even a hamster's winky of a chance. And the Tau, by the way, would only hesitate for long enough to ask if you are willing to submit to their ethereal caste and their ideology first, before they then execute you for wrong think should you unwisely refuse. So yeah, obviously this makes it pretty difficult to make it a diverse and inclusive universe. And GW, despite their desperate desire to f go full woke and denounce all those who reject their newfound values, as seen in the agree with us so you will not be missed part, there seemed to be no way to square this circle, with the best example being the constant demand from the woke circles for female space marine. And GW would no doubt love to bend the knee on this, but they are bound hand and foot by three decades worth of law, stating again and again that no, the space marines are all male, and can only ever be male, due to the nature of their transformation into super soldiers. And make no mistake, GW has tried very hard to bend the knee on this, to become all inclusive. And I do mean very hard, as in, there are African black people on the ice world of Fenris now. Or even more famously, GW denouncing their most popular faction, the Imperium of Man and the Space Marines, in a lengthy post where they made it clear that they did not understand their own setting and the reason for why the Imperium is the way it is or the meaning of satire for that matter. But oddly enough, GW declaring their most popular setting to be racist and bigoted wasn't really the virtue signal to the woke crowd they were hoping for. And so finally, knowing they could not find a law reason to make female space marines, but equally so forced to obey the absolute tenets of their new doctrine, as not doing so would in their minds and faith make them evil, bigoted, fascist Nazis, GW, like a crying and panic-stricken madman at the end of their rope, decided to do the only thing they could do. Lie. Which sounds absurd, but GW had been driven so deep into a corner here that there was no escape. They had to abide by their morality, but they could not do so in any way that made sense. It's like you walk in on your wife in bed with a stranger, her bra perched precariously on top of the nightstand lamp, her panties spinning lazily round and round from the ceiling fan her hair a mess, and her legs wrapped firmly around the stranger. And from her mouth comes the following words. This isn't what it looks like. <laughs> that is the kind of lie that GW was forced to tell. The instinctual lie, born from guilt, with no real hope of it ever being accepted as truth even for a nanosecond. They just simply say it, because that is what their guilty conscience demands of them, above and beyond anything else. But I hear you say, why not just change the law then? If it is that important, it is their setting, they own it, so why not just go, yes, we are a conquered corporation and we are changing this because our religion demands it. Well, I would almost suspect that if they did that, 
And it's not like they haven't done this before. Post-Gathering Storm Story campaign event, GW has been quite aggressive with their retcons and lore changes. Like the introduction of the primary Space Marines, and the splitting of the galaxy in two parts separated by the expanded Eye of Terror. The Primaries in particular completely defy established canon, and were practically magic wandered into existence, with no build up or preparation whatsoever. Another example would be the Necron faction, which was rebuilt pretty much from the ground up, with a complete 180 change in their lore, and GW happily talks about that. Frankly, this kind of blunt force trauma lore is pretty much GW's calling card at this point, so why this time are they pretending like they didn't change anything? To explain this, I would like to point towards the trend of removing statues in the US a few years ago. That might seem unrelated, but bear with me here. After the death of St. George of Floyd, the progressive movement in America found itself in a situation where the word racism, at that point already flagging hard in value, was once more carte blanche to do anything they wished to do, without fear of consequences. Most hilariously demonstrated by the now famous CNN clip, fiery but mostly peaceful protests showing a CNN reporter with safety goggles standing in front of a burning building. <laughs> the BLM riots, or the George Floyd protests, depending on which side of the aisle you find yourself, is alleged to have cost as much as $2 billion in damages to private and public property, as well as having cost 19 people their lives within the first two weeks of the protest. And as for consequences, well, I think the Biden campaign staffers paying bail for arrested protesters kinda says it all. But more interesting than the mob violence was what came during and after, the tearing down of the statues. This act and the reasons for it demonstrate a crucial difference in the point of view of us and the woke. You and I, most sane people, will look at a statue of Christopher Columbus or Robert E. Lee and see a historical monument, something by definition that belongs to the past. Thus the charitable view of protesters tearing down statues was, oh, um, you must be angry because of racism or something, well, that's weird, but okay, how about we move them to a museum? This solution was of course rejected. Because the left wasn't tearing down statues because of their historical context, they were tearing them down because they represented our normal system. And the woke definition of our moral system is basically anything not explicitly left. Again, I explained that in more detail in the Everything is Political video, and seriously, I know it's a bit long, but it is a required listening. And because of this, of course, tearing down the statues was not enough, because it was never about the statues, it was about power, and who was seen to wield it. Thus, it started with confederate statues because they were easy targets, and we were assured that it would totally stop there, by people who had no idea what the left is. Most beautifully represented by the fact that we were assured that they would never take down statues of the Founding Fathers because they weren't after those. And then the statues of the Founding Fathers were taken down. Water is wet, the earth spins around the sun, and the moon is made of cheese. Following these obvious statements comes, it was never about the statues, it was about power. And even more importantly, it was about the replacement of power, as can be seen by the building of new statues of St. George of Floyd. The left has no problem with monuments, they have a problem with your monuments. Because as long as they remain, they can remind you of a time before wokeism. They can remind you that you have a history. And this 
is why it was not enough to retcon the female custodies. If GW simply said, yes, we're retconning them, then the old custodies would still be there. And by their admission of retconning, GW would also officially admit that they were changing them in turn reaffirming that once upon a time all custodies were male. And that once upon a time the GW was by their own morals an evil, bigoted, exclusionary, and racist company. That is why they have to lie. That is why they have to wipe out all traces of their past. Whatever those traces may be, because wokeism cannot survive in a world that has a history of non-wokeism. Because that would be something non-political. Something to remind you of the days when you had escapism. When everything did not have to be black and white. History reminds you of a better time. And that is why the past must die. Kill it if you have to, whether it be Star Wars, Star Trek, or Warhammer, because it is all the same ideology. Until next time, I have been Arch. Thank you all very much for listening, and I hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.